Welcome back YouTube. At long last it is finally time to continue work on the outfit assembly table that I started I think 11 months ago. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, pause this one, go watch that one so you have some idea of what I'm doing. Come back and watch this video and we are going to get started on the connecting pieces to connect the other pieces. So I got a dozen uh, 10 foot long 2x6's that I need to cut in half and laminate to make the uh, blanks for the pieces just like I did the other legs. But before I get started on that I need to replace my miter saw blade. I, when I was working on the project with the Girl Scouts a couple of weeks ago, and if you don't know what I'm talking about there, go take a look at the last video I did with the shop update. We were cutting up 2x4's with this and it was just about all I could do to get through them so I picked up another blade at the Home Depot and decided I would put that on there rather than trying to sharpen this thing. I've never actually tried this, but I hooked up my uh, shop back to the dust collection on this saw to see if that actually does anything whatsoever. I've also clamped a stop block down at the other end at five feet to give me uh, repeatable cuts, so I'll just slide it and cut it and slide it and cut it until I have gone through my entire pile. It probably has more to do with the blade being clean and sharp than it does with the actual blade, but I think cuts like butter. If I can find it on Amazon, I'll link it in the description. Because I didn't buy it at Amazon, I bought it at Home Depot, but you know. So I got one of the cross member assemblies glued together. One down, seven more to go. Unfortunately, I only have enough clamps to glue one of these things together at a time, so this could take a few days. To make things a little easier on me, I pulled out an old trim paint roller. Uh, it wasn't even a new roller. I had used it and cleaned it out before. And I poured the glue out on here and spread it out with this, and this is so much better than any other method that I've used before. And I put it in this Ziploc, and it's been in there for, I don't know, 12 hours and it's still just as uh, just as wet as it was when I put it in there. So that's how I'm going to do this going forward. I'm not going to bore you with uh, gluing up a whole bunch of these things, but uh, I will leave you with a little cinematic B-roll montage.
All right, I got another one in the clamps. I wish I had a few more so I didn't have to do this one at a time, but with a 97 degrees in the garage and a 105 heat index, I don't think it'll take very long to set up before I can take it out of the clamps and do another one. Six more to go after this. So while that's curing, I think I'm gonna go get something cold to drink and play some Elite Dangerous in the air conditioning. The fleet carrier is not gonna pay for itself. So as you can see, I've spent the last several days getting these glue ups together and where are very funny, Scotty. Now beam me aboard. Thank you, Scotty. So anyway, as I was saying, I've spent the last few days uh, getting the rest of these blanks glued up and uh, now it's time to run them over the jointer and the planer and true all the edges up and get them square and then we will cut joinery. After I got done with the stretchers, I went ahead and did the same milling process to the legs that I made earlier in the previous video. I set up a stop block so I could get repeatable cuts and then cut all of the legs to the same length. My chop saw wasn't large enough to cut all the way through the five and a half inches in one go, but with the stop block I could just flip it back over and be referenced the exact same distance away and finish off the cut. When I was done with that, I set up stop blocks in two other locations to cut the stretchers uh, to the two different lengths that they needed to be for the project. The miter saw wouldn't cut all the way through the stretchers either, so I was experimenting with using plywood to pad out the fence, which would make the blade bottom out in a slightly better spot on the wood and give me less of a sliver that I had to sever after the initial cut. Those chonky legs make for a really good stop block. The table's not mine. Alright, we're finally done with all of the uh, milling and uh, rough cutting the length of all the parts, and I couldn't help but kind of stick them together to get a, a size for how, or a sense for how big this table is going to be. Obviously, it's not going to be quite this tall. Uh, these pieces are not going to be on top of the legs but they're going to be flush with the legs when I do the mortise and tenon joinery in the next video and then these pieces up top are going to be the uh, the bottom stretchers and shelf supports so I think that's where we're going to end it with this video join us next time when I attempt to cut mortise and tenon joinery I'm planning on doing the uh, the mortises in these pieces here with uh, my plunge router and then we'll cut the tenons to fit and these should all line up flush with the legs we will see how that goes and then once that's all assembled we can start working on the sort of torsion box top thanks for watching